I'm Mike Lanesman and welcome to another video tutorial. This Adobe Illustrator video tutorial demonstrates the technique used where we can apply shading to text. The main tool that we will use in this tutorial is the knife tool. Please note that you do not need the latest version of Adobe Illustrator to complete this technique. To start off with, we'll create a new document. We head on over to the File menu and we select New. Should you be using the latest version of Adobe Illustrator, this is the dialog box you will be greeted with. However, if you're using an older version, you will receive this traditional dialog box. I have selected an 800 by 600 pixel artboard and we click on Create Document. To begin with, we want to create the text that we're going to apply this effect to. So we head on over to the toolbar and we select the Type tool. We're going to insert Point Type in this example, which means you simply click to insert an insertion point for the text. A wonderful innovation that has presented itself in the latest Adobe Illustrator CC 2017 is that when you click to create a text insertion point, you are now presented with placeholder text. This was not available in previous versions. All you received in the older versions was an insertion point and you put in your own typing. Let's create the text for this tutorial. Once the text has been inputted, to enlarge the text, we simply press the Escape key and we hold Shift Command and the Greater Than key. If you're on a Windows PC, it is Shift Control and the Greater Than sign. I would like to use the Bold option for this text, which we find under the Character panel. Although any typeface that you choose will work equally well. The character panel can be accessed from the window menu. At the moment, if we double click in there, we can see that this is editable text. However, this technique cannot be used on editable text. It is usable only on a vector shape. To convert this editable text into a vector shape, we use the object menu. We select expand and you click OK. This is no longer editable text. In fact, it is a vector shape. We now go to the toolbar and we find the eraser tool. Clicking and holding on the eraser tool will bring up the knife tool. We now want to clearly draw an arc distinguishing top and bottom areas of our shape. Starting off from the left side, I'm going to draw an arc like that. The knife tool has now clearly separated the top section from the bottom section. To add colors to the top and the bottom section, we need to use the direct selection tool. Now we know that the direct selection tool will select or modify anchor points. We click off on the artboard to make sure that nothing is selected and I'm going to start drawing a rectangular marquee from the top over the text and dragging it just until it's touching the top half of our new selection that we've cut and separated. I can now apply a fill color to the top and we can now see the effect taking place. I click anywhere on the artboard to deselect and I use the same technique with the direct selection tool to draw a rectangular marquee with the white selection tool and drag it up just so it's touching the bottom half of the lettering. I will now add a fill color for the bottom. So we can now see how this technique is taking shape. The only area of concern that we note is that this section has not been selected. With the direct selection tool, we simply click on it and add a fill color to complete the technique. So the next step in the process would be to save this Illustrator file. We do that from the file menu. We select save as. We find a location and we name it appropriately. This is creating your Illustrator file, the AI file. This Illustrator file can be directly placed into Adobe InDesign, but we're also able to use this artwork in another Adobe program such as Photoshop. And we can also include a transparent background should we wish. Let's have a look how to do that. We select the artwork, 
this time we're going to select from the export menu we're going to export as a PNG file we notice all the numerous formats that are available saving as a JPEG would save it with a white background however saving with as a PNG file would allow us to save with a transparent background and we see that in the dialog box where we select transparent right let's head on over to Photoshop and we're now going to open this PNG file and using the move tool the first tool in the toolbar in Photoshop we simply drag it into our image and now we have an illustrator artwork that we can quite easily exchange and use in Photoshop we're also able to add layer styles to it from the FX layer style button located at the bottom of the layers panel for example we could add a bevel and emboss to it we could add drop shadows, outer glows, inner glows and any other effect that you may want to use so this is just illustrating how all the Adobe programs work so beautifully together that are all packaged in the Adobe Creative Cloud so this is really a cool technique to use when you want to modify text, have fun with text or do a lot of work in your designs that require something a little different or alternative in your design. I really hope you'll find a great use for it and make your designs a little more exciting with this great technique using the knife tool. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.